Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here we have the limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial divided by n to the power n, quantity raised to the 1 over nth power. So I like to deem this factorial problem as popular, mainly it like if you type this equation up in a math stack exchange, you're going to have a bunch of different solutions on how to approach this limit. Interestingly, I actually did a video similar to this faction, but the limit was written as 2n quantity factorial divided by n to the power n multiplied by n factorial and then raised to the same exponent. So um, if you want to check that video out, the link is in the description below. But the, basically, to put this simply, though both the workloads are, um, the procedure is exactly the same, but from the video that I you know, just plugged, there was more workload to that than there will be for this one, so it's a little bit lesser to it. But it's um, basically it's how the same approach just works for um, even tackling that limit. So it's just a little bit of algebra using. Um, well, the first step we're gonna actually is just call this limit some variable and then take the natural log on both sides. So that's the first step. So it actually follows through with some algebra and calculus from there. So with that, let's actually just jump right in. So as I said, I'll call this entire limit capital L. So the limit as n approaches infinity of you know the same given. Then I'll take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of L is equal to the natural log of this entire thing. And then with continuity, I'll actually just exchange that to put the limit interchange is the word I should use. Limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of n factorial divided by n to the power n and then raised to the power 1 over n. Then, of course, with natural log properties, I can actually move that 1 over n to the front of the natural log. So the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 divided by n, then multiply with ln of n factorial divided by n to the power n. And then there we have it. That's our ln of L for now. So how do we actually take into approach? Well, let's actually take a look at our natural log of our input. So the natural log of n factorial divided by n to the power n. Let's actually expand this whole thing out. So I have the natural log on the top is n factorial. So I have one times two times three times four all the way up to times n by definition of the factorials. Then with n to the power n, so I have n times n times n. Keep going all the way up to the last n. So the exponent, of course, is this is how many n, it's this n times of, you know, the base. And then if we apply some natural law properties, so I can write this as the following. I have ln of 1 divided by n, then I add this with ln of 2 divided by n, add this with ln of 3 divided by n, and if I just keep going on so on and so forth to the end, I have ln of n divided by n. Let's actually notice that we can, add, this is actually a sum of everything, so but before I get to that, let's actually now multiply this back with the 1 over n. And I'll put that as so far as described as ln of L. So to reiterate everything here, ln of L is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of inside. So I have 1 over n then times ln of 1 over n. Add this with 1 over n times ln of 2 divided by n. And we just keep going on so forth and then I have one divided one divided by n multiply with ln of n divided by n. So everything is a continuous partial sum so I can actually write that in that sense. So here now I have everything now in terms of a limit so I have the limit as n approaches infinity of our partial sum so k is equal to 1 we'll put that as our index and then all the way up to n of ln of k divided by n, and then I multiply this with 1 over n. Okay, so this is actually nice that you'll notice that if you take a look closely, and if you use um, the correct, you, if you use your observations correctly, you'll notice that this is actually can be written in terms of the definition of a Riemann sum. So if we choose this carefully on what our bounds is and what the function is, and utilizing, of course, with the Riemann sum definition, of the Riemann integral, the definition of the Riemann integral. So everything can be written as this definite integral from zero to one of the natural log of x, then dx. As you can see that if you just, again, use that definition, these two are gonna be the same thing in terms of a limit. So with this, as we know that we can actually just apply integration by parts, we let u equals ln of x, we let b equals, or dv equals dx. You put this all together, so I have that x times ln of x, subtract x, and then evaluate this from zero to one. So let's put that back in. So if I plug in one, so let's see, I have one, then ln of one, subtract one. Then I have to subtract the zero term, 
but actually we need to be careful here because if I plug in zero for ln of x, we know that ln of zero is undefined, but we can actually fix that up by actually writing this in terms of a limit. So I'll put this as the limit as x approaches zero plus, since ln, ln, ln of x, the function, the natural log functions is usually defined for positives. So I'll put this, we're approaching things from the right hand side of zero of x ln of x and then minus zero. So I'm just gonna leave that the way it is. So over here, that means one times ln of one, zero, then minus one. So that's gonna be a minus one over here. And so all that's left is we have to subtract the limit as x approaches zero plus of x times ln of x. So how do we do something like this? If we want to, it, of course we see that zero uh, then times ln of zero, you might think that this is just gonna approach zero, right? But you don't want to rush yourself and say that you wanna actually confirm that it does indeed approach zero. But with this, we can actually write this in terms of a rational function if we actually um, rewrite some things. So in other words, we can actually write the x as one over x under the denominator. So you can see where I'm coming from with this for anybody um, who's, for anybody that knows how, where I'm going with this. So this is ln of x, and then on the bottom, I'll write this as one over x. Now, if I were to take things from, um, as x approaches zero from the right, then ln of zero plus, that's actually going to approach negative infinity. And if I take this from the right of one over x, that's gonna approach positive infinity. So I have a, well, a negative infinity over infinity, but disregarding that negative, we still have an indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, which as you can see, anybody knows where I'm going with this, we can actually apply L'Hopital's rule and take that derivative of both the numerator and the denominator. So here, the derivative of the top we're gonna have, so let me first write the limit as x approaches zero plus, I have is going to be one over x and under the denominator this is going to be negative one times um, negative one divided by x squared so if I simplify things even further so I have the limit as x approaches zero plus of negative x and this is nice that if I just take things as it approach zero this is actually going to indeed approach zero and so therefore negative one then minus zero we're just left with negative one is equal to this definite integral over here so negative one and so now all that's left is that we have ln of l is indeed just equal to negative one take the e base of both sides and so therefore l which is equal to our given limit is equal to just one divided by e which therefore completes the evaluation of our factorial simpler well in terms of workload of our limit just like that so yeah if you want to check out the other video i mentioned i'll leave that link in the description below um, for more of an intense work work if you want to put it into that perspective but yeah that's uh pretty cool if you ask me